Hi Jim, how's it going today? Uh, this tree I'm going to call the Jim Blaney tree because it just never says die. Look at that thing, it still has leaves. It's sort of the, I'd say it's maybe the sole survivor in the park. The park is looking a little bare, but uh, I kind of like that because it means that uh, it's going to snow soon. So that's the view out my window today. Uh, not too much traffic. It's Friday afternoon here and uh, just getting this quick video done. This is your baseball component. So um, some of the exercises you've done before, some will be, I think they'll be a little bit basic, but that's, you know, you know me. I want to begin at the beginning. All right, enjoy. Here's a lunge lateral. Uh, you can use dumbbells, um, holding them up here at shoulder level or down here. It does not make a big difference to me, but just remember, keep your chest up and give a really good hard push back up from this position with a solid torso. So don't let your torso break as you come back up, nice and solid, and drive back up. From the side, remember, you're going to be reaching back with your butt and coming up like that. Second exercise, we're going to be playing baseball, doing some more throwing and hitting. Um, I want to really make sure we're working the muscles of the mid-back. So we're going to do a bent over dumbbell row. Nice flat back, rowing up, no shrugging, just squeezing the shoulder blades down and in as you row. A little pause at the top to get that squeeze. This one you'll be able to go pretty heavy on. Again, if you're doing more throwing, we want to really look after that shoulder, keep it healthy, make sure it's ready to go. Um, this is a drill that I call shoulder breakdowns, and it's really um, three components. So the first component, I'll keep my elbow and shoulder just in this position. I'll come through just the, using my torso to wind it up, but my shoulder is stable, so my shoulder blade is locked down. I'm just winding it up with my torso. The second part of it is just the arm. So I'm just here bringing my arm back, bringing my arm back. My torso is not doing all that much. I'm just coming from here to here using my shoulder and my arm. And then the very last bit is just my shoulder external rotation. So I've gone from the biggest muscles, my torso, to my arm and shoulder, to just the shoulder rotation. That's the sequence we'll go through. And then you'll also do the same thing the other direction. So I'll come from here, strong torso, come around, come around, come around. So keeping that shoulder just in this position as I rotate my torso. And then I'll follow through just with my arm. And then I'll finish just with internal shoulder rotation, keeping my upper arm still and just rotating there. So when you do the wind-ups, attach the bungee a little lower like it is here. When you do the follow-throughs, then attach the bungee a little bit higher. It will just feel more comfortable and it will give you a little more consistent pull through the range. Bungee hip block, just working on building up some power. So you're going to take here, come through, through, Make sure you get that pivot of your hips and your back foot as you come through. Strong in the torso. The power is coming all from your legs and hips and your torso. This one looks pretty nice so far, doesn't it? <laughs> looks can be deceiving. This is uh, the nastiest one that uh, you've probably done in a while. Um, it's a single leg squat to a hop. So I'm just using eight pound dumbbells. Um, maybe even just start with body weight and see how that feels. But I'll stand a little bit in front of the bench. I'm going to squat down until I tap, and then I'll hop up. Hop up. Hop up. See how that motion comes from my hip, and I'm keeping a nice stable back position. If I wasn't staying stable in the back, you'd see my chest kind of dip forward every time I go to hop. I want to keep that good, strong, neutral back position as I go through that exercise. You're going to feel that like crazy in your glutes, in your quad, and probably a bit in your low back as well, just as a stabilizer though, not as a discomfort. Wrist curls 
you can, I'm just using an easy curl bar, it weighs about 15 pounds. Um, the 45 pound Olympic bar might be a bit heavy, but if you have one of the, you know, sort of smaller fixed barbells or, or the old school ones with the small diameter, it would work fine. You can also use dumbbells, but just make sure you keep your forearms resting on your thighs the whole time so don't lift your elbows up and then let the bar roll right down into your fingers and roll it back up. You get a little less range on these than you think you should so don't let that fuss you if you don't feel like you're getting your hands right up to here. When your fingers are closed you only get about that high up and then you would just turn around and go the other way curling up. Again, keeping your forearms on your thighs. And this time when you go this way, the, the barbell won't roll into your fingers. Those are wrist curls. This is flexion, this is extension. This one is a medicine ball rotary pass. And I have to do a kinder, gentler version of it because the last time I tried to really do it in here, I broke the drywall and then that makes trouble for me. So uh, I'm going to show you just the easy version. Really, it's um, unless you have a concrete block wall in your house, um, it's best done in um, either a gym that has a concrete block wall or outside on one of your exterior walls or in the garage or somewhere like that. But the big thing here is that it's a rotational movement. So the movement comes from your torso. You're not throwing it with your hands. You're throwing it by turning your shoulders and your body. So I would pass it, let it go, catch it, pass it, let it go, catch it. So I should be throwing it pretty hard and it will come off fairly quick. So really it will be boom, 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 like that. Now, the other thing is make sure you're staying braced in your torso so that you're absorbing that with your abdominal muscles. You're not just accepting the ball and swinging around until you sort of come to the end of your range of motion of rotation about your spine, you're using those abdominal muscles to bring it in and then generate force back again. It's a plyometric exercise. It's really advanced, so start easy and make sure that you've got the movement. No dipping forward as you come. It's just in and out. Um, and then you can start to gradually go a little bit quicker. Think of the width of stance you would use when you're throwing or batting and try to go with something similar to that. Um, don't get really, really wide out there. Um, this actually is, uh, sometimes I'll use this with goalies to work their groins a little bit, in which case I will get a fairly wide stance um, as we go, but just make sure you gradually widen the stance. So if you're using it for goaltending training, you can go wider, wider, wider stance um, but just slowly move that way and start slow because when you're in the wide stance and you're adding a trunk rotation, you'll be putting more stress through your groin. So if you're not careful, great way to injure your groin. Go slow, make sure you've got the mobility, and then worry about the speed. Make sure you're really well warmed up. Uh, this is a six pound medicine ball, probably a great place to start. Don't go and pick the heaviest one you have. Start about six pounds. Um, and I wouldn't really go much heavier than 12 pounds on this one for most people.